Batwoman number 8, written by J.H. Williams III and W. Hayden Blackman, art by Amy Reeder. Last issue we left off with... Okay, so the thing about this book is that it's told in like eight different alternating stories of all these different people at all these different times. So when I say last time, I'm just going to say Batwoman's story, which is by far like the least progressive each time, where last issue it left off with them about to fight Killer Croc and the literal Bloody Mary. Sure. So this issue picks up, they're about to fight again, and Batwoman pulls out the weird electronic arrow thing that Chase gave her last issue, and she starts spouting off like commands to it, and it shocks Killer Croc, and it shatters Bloody Mary, and it sets fire to uh, La Llorona, and then as it's going through and basically just tearing through the entire monster squad as we've had it, uh, Falchion, the leader of all of them, just picks up one of the little hostage kids, puts a sword to its neck and be like, all right, stop what you're doing or I'm going to kill the kid. And Batwoman backs down. Then we cut to Maro's story, who is a guy who was helping Falchion, I think. He's a guy who makes monsters. And we cut all the way back to the fight scene that was being dissected back in like issue three of this book and it shows exactly what happened and the dude who had the hook hand was the victim in that scene and they show him be basically on an operating table and infused with this magic technological weird hook thing called the Ashoth that it wants to be a part of somebody it wants to be a part of flesh and so it burrows itself into his skin and turns him into the weird butcher hook hand guy so it's weird that they had it that far planned, but I like it. And then we cut to Kate's story a week ago, and basically it boils down to Chase has been surveilling Maggie, who is going out and like going out to lunch and stuff like that, sometimes with friends, sometimes without. But what Maggie points out is that Kate is never around on these dates, and as such, it seems like they're she's about to like break up with her or whatever Kate's like you don't know anything about my life and she's like well I can tell you that regardless you need to be fostering this relationship because we need her we need to know what she knows so go ahead and keep that relationship going at least for the sake of the DEO and yeah so that's that six nights ago Maggie's story they're out on two boats out in the harbor one of them has soon the woman who Maggie picked up during a raid and the Batwoman is on the ship that she believed soon to be on because they needed to grab soon for Maggie's plans. However, or not for Maggie for um, Chase's plans. I think I might have said Maggie like four times in there regardless. Uh, but it turns out that she hopped on the wrong boat. So she has to go over to Maggie's boat and they get into a big fight scene because Batwoman had stealth before, but now she's being seen and she actually has to fight maggie a little bit but she puts her down very gently and then as she makes her way down to the hull of the ship in order to get soon she has like a tranquilizer dart to knock her out but maggie attacks her again and kate accidentally doses her with the trank dart and she's like oh god i'm so sorry that wasn't meant for you then we cut to jacob in the hospital with bet and jacob's convinced that she moved but the doctor's like that was probably in your head but you should still stay here and keep talking to her and that was an entire page of that and then we get Chase's story six nights ago where after they got soon off the boat, uh, they hijack a truck that they are hiding in the back because their escape plans have been compromised. And so soon is being hidden in the back there, but she's only willing to cooperate if they give her immunity. Also, Batwoman beats the crap out of Mag or out of Chase because she's so upset that she dosed Maggie. And then we cut back to Batwoman's story, which is going on now, where she's surrendered to Falchion, and as Falchion's about to take a swinging blow uh, at Batwoman, she nearly jumps out of the way, but still gets clipped, and she's like, oh, I thought this new armor was supposed to be impervious. Like, I was shot in it, and I was fine. And she's like, ah, but this is a magic sword. Nothing can stop it. And as he is about to wind up again he's shot in the neck by an arrow shot by soon who is apparently i, I want to say their brother sister because they're both mentioning a mother but mother might just be an honorific term but then you know Batwoman's like ah, i knew you'd show up and 
Falchion's all upset. This issue felt like it didn't really do anything. Like where, at the beginning of not last or sorry of last issue, she was just fighting the hook-handed man, and then at the end of that issue, she was about to fight the croc and Bloody Mary, and then at the end of this issue, she's just about to fight Fauci. Like, I get that we're telling the story out of order and we are getting a full story's worth over the course of it, but because of the main plot being the thing that I'm relating this all back to, like, I didn't need to know the hook-handed man's backstory after the point where he's already been revealed. Maybe it'll come into play later, but it just feels like they were like, all right, here's this guy's story and this other person's story. You you want to have five or six pages devoted all to, like, Jacob, Jacob Kane over the course of six issues? That's fine, but, like, why does it have to be all two weeks ago or whatever? I do feel like all these stories are going to culminate into something, but in the meantime, reading it through, it's just a slog of, like, n you have five different plots going on five different stories at five different points and all of them are moving at a snail's pace because they're only able to get two pages every month so i'm i'm a little bit upset with that but in terms of storytelling wise in terms of like how they handle each individual story they're all solid i like each individual one and it is telling a decently good thing here but i feel like this is like there's a cut of the movie memento that puts all of the pieces in order I feel like for that movie, it defeats the purpose entirely, but at least it would make it so that I understand what's going on, you know, if they were to do that with this story. If I were to cut up this and put it into sequential order, at least I'd be like, okay, things are happening. But over the course of three issues, I feel like nothing has. So, yeah, I don't know. I give it a six. And honestly, a lot of that comes down to, yeah, I'm just not impressed with how much the story is. The art-wise is still fine. It still doesn't quite hold a candle to the layouts that were presented in the first arc, because that was just beautiful the whole way through. This is fine. It still gets creative sometimes, but it's it's not quite as interesting. So yeah, six for this one. I just kind of hope the storytelling style is done after this arc. Mm -hmm.